Welcome back. We are joined by David Hebb from Fortitude Counseling and Consulting. Welcome back to the show, David. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. We are talking about a couple of different topics today. First one, uh, what you should be thinking about before you decide to get married. I mean, it's something that I think we should all be doing, but I think you have probably some unique tips to pass on. Well, and you know, I, I was kind of um, torn a little bit when I was thinking about today about, you know, should I use the, the marriage word? Because, you know, in the age of, you know, there's a lot of talk about millennials right now and the generation kind of born after 1980 that are doing things a little differently than what we've seen in the past. So in the past, things like own your own home and have a long-term career and get married were seen as the big definers of success in adult life. Mm -hmm. It's kind of changing nowadays. Lots of times people now, they decide to be in long-term committed relationships instead of deciding to get married. So I titled today, you know, what to look at before marriage. Really, it's about if you're going to decide about a long-term committed relationship, what are some important things to kind of discuss and examine before you decide to go down that way? Okay, we've got a couple of uh, slides to look at. Sure. So, you know, I put at the top of the list kids. You know, do we want them? What's the timeline? Um, it's not a foregone conclusion that both people in a relationship are going to want children or at that that desire may change at different times throughout that relationship and so it's important to have that discussion and it's not just simply about how many and and what you hope the gender to be but you know what's it gonna look like from parenting styles what's it gonna look like what are you good at what am I good at you know and make sure that people have a defined role going into it because we both know with children it can be a very very steep learning curve It's a huge game changer too. absolutely and also I think this would be very tough for for a relationship if both people agree yes we want children and once married one decides not I don't know how you get over that yeah and you know it's all about communication and and you know sometimes things like that um, are not easily to be to be rectified in a relationship so all mm -hmm. the more reason to have those those real solid talks ahead of time before you know a long-term commitment okay so going back to that yeah, slide the money. second one money so you know lots of times the norm is the two the two income family you know people working at different jobs uh, making sure that they're able to, to support the, the lifestyle but having conversations about you know what is budgeting and more importantly debt how do we feel about that some people think mortgage debt is good debt other people think that they should look at RRSPs and investing but it's important to have those discussions not so that you can concede one way or the other toward anybody's particular interest but to make sure that you're having a solid understanding of what's important to each individual going forward I hear that finances are the number one breakup of marriage is that it, true it can be hard I mean a lot of times it's it's behavior behind financial mistrust that that can be really really difficult okay. on relationships you know that hidden spending or or resentful spending and and you know that can be really really difficult okay yeah, so absolutely back to the slide, and then wills. the last one I put living wills uh, which you know is is about um, what you would like to be treated like you know during end-of-life difficulties you know how would you like your loved one to answer the questions about you know what does my medical care need to look like how far would I like life-saving interventions to go and then lastly the the regular wills if you want to call it that you know mm -hmm. asset division and who's going to look after children and any important decisions that need to be made on your behalf you want to make sure the other person that you're choosing to spend your life with is understanding of what your goals and hopes are. Okay. Let's go into the next slide. We've got a few more. Sure. So, you know, what would family relationships look like with in-laws and friends? And what do we ex expect from each other in times of conflict, right? Everybody fights, right? Disagreements happen all the time. It's part of what defines both successful and difficult relationships. So what does it look like? What can I count on from my partner in times of conflict? And more importantly, how do I respond to constructive ways of, of being able to, to manage things? Okay. And then lastly, where do you turn for help? Mm -hmm. And that can be done with a professional and it has to be agreed upon. So the process can be done with a loan or with a professional. Be organic and flexible with the process and the results, right? One person might feel more heard. Other person might feel like they have more needs to come across with. It's important to have those open and honest conversations about that. Okay. Don't compare to others, other couples, your parents, um, you know, siblings and their relationships. Not all relationships are the same. It's important to define what a successful relationship within your own partnership would look like. And don't think that somebody else's relationship, just because it looks good from the outside, is good on the inside, yeah, right? No, that's, that's true. It's, it's easy to, to look desirably at others in, in, you know, whether it's the house they live in or the cars they drive or the relationship they seem to have, when ultimately there might be underlying difficulties that, that they're just not comfortable sharing with others. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, and then, and last then lastly, do regular check-ins and be accepting of 
change. You mm -hmm. know, um, relationships, like I said, they're organic. They need to ebb and flow with, with different times and, and stressors and, and different impacts on them. It's important to really be able to manage what those look like. And open communication is really the way of doing that. Absolutely. We're going to have you in for one more segment. What will we be Wait. talking about next? You know, next we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about change, mm -hmm. which can be scary, but there's a process that outlines how change can be looked at um, to increase success. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and kind of go from there. Awesome. Okay. Relationship tips with David Hebb. We'll have more in two minutes. Stay with us. Welcome back. David Hebb joining us from Fortitude Counseling and Consulting. Uh, thanks for being here. Of course. Uh, second segment today. We're talking today about change and how to handle it, how to accept it. Uh, not everybody's good at that. No, and, and you know, there's this cliche in, in society where people say, I fear change or change is so difficult. And, and it's true. A lot of people feel really uncomfortable when they have to entertain changing something in their life that they may have, um, you know, been able to count on in the past and, and not really willing to, to tolerate change in. And so when I work with people in my practice, a lot of what I do is entertaining what anxiety looks like in change, but then really breaking down how you're reacting to a change rather than the factors around what the change might include. Mm -hmm. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, positive change and the positive that comes from change because I think that's an important process that people go through sometimes. Okay, let's get into the slides. Uh, the power of change to create difference and to want differences. Get into the second slide now. Uh, so factors leading to change. Right. So, I mean, you know, nobody, you know, can ever predict change. Sometimes people choose to make change, but circumstantial, like a loss of control, is often a precipitator to change. And that's when people feel like their hands in the air and there's nothing they can do and they have to make change. Grieving, expect you know, grieving circumstances, loss of a job, um, you know, uh, difficult personal decisions, they put people in a forced need to change. Mm -hmm. um, change of feelings. And this happens in relationships, right? A personal choice to go in a different direction. Sometimes you have to allow the person that you're with or allow yourself to understand that change is necessary and it can be a difficult thing to consider but it's sometimes something that can't be avoided at the mm -hmm. same time and then lastly change is no longer uh, avoided you you actually can't find reasons to convince yourself that staying is more beneficial than entertaining of what change looks like or mm -hmm. making what that change looks like mm -hmm. okay so, yeah and you know things that it can help with in addiction issues, compulsive circumstance, we often see people forcing to, to make change when they've run out of options. Um, when two sides seem like they're such so, so far apart and that there's such a dichotomy between the two things that they're looking at, they need to make that change. Okay. And then lastly, when a definition could be beneficial in a situation and what it might look like with a different change. What does that mean when definition could be beneficial? Lots of times people just kind of bump through life without actually knowing what they're doing or realizing that they're just kind of doing the same thing and it's actually in a efficient, right? I wish things would be different, but I'm not going to do them different because it seems like it's too much work. So some definition about, you know what, if things changed, it could look like this would make me feel better. That's the definition that sometimes people look for. Okay. Definitely. Right. For Let's sure. So this is um, a bit of an industry standard. Um, you know, the process of change, it's sometimes called the trans theoretical model of change. Um, it really is, is circular in nature. So at the top, we have pre contemplation, you know, that's the even beginning stages of thinking about change, right? Right. Moving on to contemplation, that's, you know what, I've thought about making change, but now I can honestly say that the change would probably be beneficial in my life. Right. And then moving on to determination, that's, you know what, I'm determined now to make a change. I've decided that change is necessary. The action phase, which is the actual change portion, you know, what it looks like, what it might be. So sometimes a, a, an example I give is, is work schedules. Sometimes people think, you know what, Monday to Friday is perfect for me. But you know what, it's not working so well with my family. So maybe a Tuesday to Saturday might be better, right? So they think about the change. They they consider what it'll look like and then in the, the, the action phase, they actually say, I'm going to start working Tuesday to Saturday and we're going to see how it goes. And then we can go either ways. It can go into maintenance, which is, you know what? It feels right. I'm going to continue doing it. We're going to keep going with this because it was a good change. Or you see the, the arrow going off to the left there, which is relapse, which is often seen as, you know what? Maybe this change wasn't for the best. Maybe after I've gone through the different methods and the modes of change, I realize that maybe going back to something that was in, in, in place before or something different would be better. And mm -hmm. so you're able to kind of ebb and flow in and out of those stages of change as you go through it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any more slides? Or yeah, a couple of quotes. Um, I thought this was interesting. Tony Robbins, uh, for changes to be of any true value, they've got to be lasting and consistent. And lastly, some people don't like change, but you need to embrace change if the alternative is disaster. 
faster, that's right? right? And that's from Elon Musk, who is, of course, the, the CEO of Tesla, who does all the electric cars and, mm -hmm. and everything like that, who's on the cutting edge of most technology. So He has a book out, too. I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to read it. See what happens. Yeah. Uh, any other little pieces of advice? We have about one minute. Yeah. No. You know, we talked a little bit last time about uh, in my last segment about you know kind of changes and 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 or sorry and thoughts and questions about marriage. Um, I just wanted to to kind of show a little bit of a um, a resource I use and and it's it's something it's it's cards. Fifty two questions to ask um, before marriage and yeah. it's just a fun way of looking at uh, different strategies to stretch your comfort in a relationship mm -hmm. and to make it so that you know what these questions are designed to make me think in depth about the things in my life that I would like to see different in my marriage or what I'd like to see happen as I move forward in my relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's about that mindful practice of people working on things constructively. I, like I just that. find this is a great way of being able to help people kind of move through things when either they get stuck in a situation or they're just apprehensive about what starting looks like. Absolutely. It's a fun way to find out a little bit more about your partner. It is. Uh, either in a good or bad way. Hard to say. Right? Absolutely. Depends on how the card game goes for yeah. you. <laughs> David, have thank you for being here today. My pleasure. If you have any questions for David, fortitude at counselor.com as well. The phone number 819-5998. We are back after a quick break. Stay with us.